Encounter Tournament and Trick 2G's army on the blue side looking to pick up their first win of the week against an undefeated Voy Boy and his squadron. Yeah, and this is going to be, you know, a really tough game for Trick 2G. Really what it comes down to is what is Trick 2G going to pick? It looks like he's kind of swapped into that jungle role here. And, you know, is that jungle Udyr, if we do see Udyr unbanned, going to be as good as that top lane? And what is he going to pull out here is my big question. Yeah, actually, one of the big things to note, a wild Mimo is now in top lane rather than jungle. We have Trick 2G in the jungle. And then instead of having fishing for Earth play mid lane, they've brought in Strompist. And Strompist, he plays a lot of different roles, but more recently he was playing top role for Trick's team. He played that Nasus that kind of got a lot of stacks, but didn't necessarily do anything with them in the first game that they had against, I believe it was on the Cutie Pies team. So we'll have to see here. Can Trick 2G with these swaps in his roster maybe pull something out to surprise Void Boy Squadron? Well, we're going to have to see. Let's crank in Nidalee with the first two bands, RF Legendaries. Well, he got a chance to play Nidalee once, so I don't think he's ne ever going to get a chance to play that again. The almost mandatory I Am Matt Life Blitzcrank ban and a Jace actually being thrown out by Team 2G. Yeah, Jace is a really strong champion. They probably don't want to deal with those poke and siege comps. They did get a little bit of that in their last game. And then, you know, they definitely don't want to give I Am Matt Life Blitzcrank and obviously RF Legendaries Nidalee, despite the fact that it did have, you know, a rocky start in yesterday's games, came out strong in those late game team fights, executing everybody. Vigar and Warwick coming out as bans on Boy Boy's side. Warwick, no surprise, very powerful champion, despite the fact that we saw it kind of underutilized in the last game. And then Teemo is the last ban. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> Run me through the Teemo ban, Optimus Tom. Let's hear it. What do you got? What's your theory? A lot of people either love or hate Teemo, and apparently the Voy Scouts are ones that do not like Teemo. So, the so Teemo they don't honor the Scouts code, is what you're telling me. <laughs> they do not honor the Scouts code. They're, just, they're, they're one of those rowdy mobs that just absolutely hates Teemo. But what's a mob to a king? <laughs> Trick to I don't know. the king here. Might be denied, though, with <laughs> that might. Udyr first pick. It's just... I, I'm ready. I think Boy Boy's going to do it. I think they're going to pick the Udyr. You know, despite the fact that no one on their team might know how to play it, taking it away from Trick 2G and beating him with it, I mean, that's got to be a highlight for you. Maybe a little bit cocky, but it's got to be a highlight. We do see the quick swap over to Lucian. I would not be surprised if that's what they actually lock in there. Pantheon as well. Strong AD carry. Strong jungler most likely from them. Against probably the best support in the meta. And then that instant lock in on Udyr. Trick's not fooling around. He actually wants to play that champion. He played in top lane last time, but he wasn't really able to get the pushing power up against the top lane solo Maokai that was being played against him. This time he's got it in the jungle, and that's a little bit more where King Trick feels at home. That is his domain. However, Sicko Scott coming in for Voy Boy's team this game. He's going to be playing that jungle pantheon here. So that's going to be a very powerful pickup, as we did see Nightblue using that one quite effectively last game. Yeah, I'm really excited to see this pantheon pick. See how someone else might use it. Obviously, Nightblue, very strong jungler, very comfortable on Pantheon. It'll be interesting to see how Boy's team uses it. Uh, you know, we do have that Maokai coming out on the other side. You know, Trick did get beat out by it in his last game, so it's cool to see that they're using it on their team this time. Definitely not a matchup he wants, but Trick is also in the jungle now, so maybe not something they had to worry about. However, Maokai is still clearly a very safe pick in this meta. Oh, yeah. And we saw how the power of Malkai in teamfights was. You throw down the Vengeful Maelstrom, and your team just takes a lot of reduced damage. And it was very, very huge when people were trying to go for those dragon buffs. And with Trick's normal split pushing, gate opening style, having all the extra damage to minions and towers he could possibly get is a huge thing for him to look for. So bringing in something with all that AoE teamfight prowess, not surprising to see out of a top lane pickup here for a wild Mima. But on the flip side here, Looks like we're going to have an Aurelia pickup to go head-to-head -head against that very tanky tree in top lane, and a Soraka to potentially go in the bottom lane with a Lucian for the side of Void Boy's team. Now, of course, the Aurelia is a pretty standard top lane pick. She will eventually outscale that Maokai, providing so much damage in teamfights in the late game. Maybe struggling a bit in the early game, but the Soraka is really odd. I am Matt Life, known for his amazing hooks both on Blitzcrank and on Thresh, not opting to go for the open Thresh at this point, instead opting for the Soraka. Uh, definitely an interesting choice, especially against a team with an Udyr, where she doesn't really have that many options to get away from him. Uh, we also see Zed locked in almost immediately for Strompist in that mid lane. Uh, Zed's going to be pretty fantastic against this Lucian and maybe not so good against the Soraka. Kind of an interesting pick at this point.
Yeah, we're going to have to see. Zed is also a blind pick into what we don't exactly know is going to be the mid lane matchup here. Now, if for some reason that Pantheon is being assumed to be in the jungle and winds up going into mid lane, that's going to be a terrible time for that Zed. Zed's going to have no fun in that matchup whatsoever. But Zed still, like you said, a very useful champion, very versatile, kind of fits into that split push mentality, also able to pretty much 1v1 almost anybody in the later stages of the game. So picking that one up is going to be extremely, extremely beneficial for the side of uh, Team 2G. As well as that Graze pickup, which is kind of the one that, you know, you want to pick it up the Graze when you want to really kind of bully that Lucian round during the lane phase. Yeah, and Graves is like commonly referred to as a counter pick, and you know, it's still definitely not amazingly in Graves' favor, but when you combine Graves' pretty solid AD scaling with that Jaina shield, it's looking to be a pretty powerful lane. The real question at this point is how is this Soraka support going to pick and work out? But before we even worry about that, let's talk about this LeBlanc pick for Voivoi. Boy. What, what are we. Very LeBlanc. powerful. Very powerful mid laner. She doesn't necessarily have the same utility anymore ever since Riot removed her silence from her E. Uh, sorry, for her Q, not from her E. The E is still pretty much the same. But uh, rest in peace is silence. But still, a lot of front end damage coming out from LeBlanc. It looks like Voivoi is going to be taking that one into the mid lane as well, going up against that Zed. And LeBlanc's had a lot of play in OGN recently. Like, if you guys have been watching the preseason, the OGN, just the raw damage that she puts out, she's able to do that early game with barely any items on her side. I believe it was, uh, oh, who did Jin Air wind up playing? I believe they wound up playing against K. It wasn't, yeah, I think it might have been KT. It was, uh, uh, Goong actually was able to pick up an early game pentakill just based off the fact that the enemy team was low and LeBlanc just deals a lot of damage. So Voiboy is always known to play a lot of solo laners that can impact the rest of the map and having someone with the roam potential like LeBlanc and the mobility that she has, very devastating in the hands of Voiboy. But on the opposite side, I mean, we do know uh, it is pretty much speculated that LeBlanc has this excellent Jace mid lane matchup, but how is she going to fare in lane against this Zed? The chain being her only real CC option to shut him down, range obviously in her advantage, but early game, Zed's going to be able to push her to tower so quickly, you know, not being restricted by mana costs, using energy as a resource instead, so good for him. And that level 6 all-in, uh, it doesn't really matter if she gets to, you know, use that decoy at all. As long as he ults the right target, it's going to be hard for Voiboy to survive that burst. Mm. I also have to correct myself. I said Naj I said uh, KT instead of Najin because I'm dumb like that. So yeah. it was the Najin team with Goong. I should have recognized my mistake on that one. But I'm going to be super excited for this game because Trick 2G's team, they're hungry for a win in this one. They have a lot more damage than their previous teams have had, which has kind of been one of their weak points, too. So this Zed pickup, this Graze pickup, the front end damage coming out from those two champions, as well as the split pushing running around the map prowess that you always have to worry about with Trick 2G on Oud here. I'm really excited to see what these two teams wind up bringing to the Rift. And come on, we have Voiba and a mid lane assassin. It's, it's pretty hype here. So guys, we are going to be loading into the Rift here for the third and final game of the evening and the sixth and final game of the first week of the HP Omen Encounter. If you want to learn more about the HP Omen Encounter or influence the next week's draft that will be going live on Monday evening, you should check out omen.gg while we're waiting to load into Summoner's Rift here. You can also enter yourself to win a fancy schmancy new HP Omen laptop, guys. So vote for your favorite captains. Hang on tight for the commercial break and we'll be back with the last game of the evening right after this welcome to summoners rift ladies and gentlemen it's the last game of the evening as trick 2g's army takes on the boy scouts on the red side of the map over here and if you guys didn't get a chance to check out that sick loading screen today i learned lucian's bringing a harpoon onto summoners rift today just i mean it just kind of worked out being beautiful there one of my big things coming into this game is that you know Trick 2G's team has already had a little bit of a warm-up. I mean, in the form of a loss, so we can't be sure as to how their moods are. But Boy Boy's team hasn't really had any uh, experience in this tournament today. So this is their first match, and really curious to see how these players play. Obviously, they performed amazingly yesterday, but are they going to bring the same performance to the table today? Well, we'll have to see about this one. Trick 2G's team starting off with a little bit of fun. The taunt spam going down in the river. It's RF Legendary with the BM. Quick little auto attack on the Trick 2G, able to deal a little bit of damage to him. Trick actually uh, seeing how far away he can get with this one going between the enemy towers, but that's actually kind of deceptive. He could put a ward down over there. He could get some vision down on Voiboy's jungle. There's a lot of things that could potentially happen there. So Voiboy could have come over here, puts a ward down on Trick and says, no, I see what you're up to, man. Wrong jungle, yes. Udir, says Matt Lyon. Strompus quick to spam that robot Zed laugh. Wah, 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 wah. 
as he, uh, you know, goes into that jungle. Oh, it's so good. I love it. Um, <laughs> moving forward, though, I mean, you know, despite the fact that Trick is disrespecting, if he had placed a ward, it would have offered a lot of vision utility. He didn't there. Just looking to taunt, maybe throw Boy Boy's team on edge. Remind him that, you know, he is the king in this situation. He's going to be counter jungling like a champion. Well, we'll have to see how these games start out. Or if Legendary has a ward over the wall by the Grump, he is going to wind up seeing that Trick 2G and a Wild Mimo are going to be starting up. Wild Mimo actually going for the Sapling Toss first, so he's going to be dealing a little bit of extra damage, helping Trick 2G just knock that Grump down as quickly as possible. Quick little stun from the Equilibrium Strike coming out from Morelia as both top laners decide to go back into their own lane. Trick's going to go towards his blue buff, while at the same exact time, Sicko Scott didn't get all too much help from uh, his bottom lane on the Gromp, but he's able to pick that oneself up with the Total Steel Armor, going to go to his own blue buff. Bottom lane, some trades went down and already a slight advantage in favor of Graves, but of course, Sorak can just heal up all the damage on the Ethel at the cost of her own health, of course. Yeah, and in the mid lane, we see similar training back and forth almost perfectly even between Boy Boy and Strompist here. Really excited to see how this matchup unfolds. Both characters very mobile, very, you know, very much a skill matchup. We can see who outplays the other one at this point. Boy Boy does take a little more damage here, but lands the chains, may return it back so quick on that. In the top lane, yeah. RF Legendary suffering early. Really going to be tough for him to survive against this Maokai in these early levels just because of how much utility Maokai has and the amount of damage his base skills do at level 1 and 2. Oh man, Voidboy actually got his clone popped as well, but Shromp is going to get Flash done here by Sicko Scott. Does have the Shadow alive, though. Flash will go out from Voidboy and Shromp is, so he's going to stay alive for the time being. But really good gank there by Sicko Scott, but two summoners burn for the price of one. Yeah, and this is going to be really tough for Shromp is moving forward because Pantheon is so good against Zed. The ability to just have a targeted stun like that means Zed has no opportunity to outplay. And even if he does ult to dodge it the first time, I mean, it's not like the cooldown doesn't go off. So, no matter what happens, Pantheon's going to stun that Zed at this point. Bottom lane, Ethel taking a lot of damage. Matlife also hits his healing up very, very quickly early on, so he's extremely low. Barely survives to that one, chugging down on his... Actually, biting down on his biscuits, I should say, on that one. Ethel as well, taking very low. Chugs his own health potion. Zerbic used his, and there's no health potions on the side of Janna either, so so much early trading going on across the map. Speaking of in the mid lane here, Voiboy, the Ignites go down. Strompus is the one that gets first blood at there. Voiboy picks up the kill. Looks like Trick2G was in the mid lane trying to get something done, but Pantheon is waiting in the wings as well. Voiboy sending the clone out, trying to get the distract down on the Trick2G. Bear Stands comes out. Sicko Scott is there. Trick's going to run away. First blood for Boy Boy. And that was such a good outplay from Boy Boy. He pulls back into his own after his deceive, baiting Zed in, knowing the snare is going to go off, and Zed auto attacks Boy Boy in the middle of that huge minion wave, taking all of that minion aggro and dying so quickly. Very close, very smart play from Boy Boy. Well, there you go there. That's why Void Boy on these Assassin Champions is super deadly. So is Sicko Scott, though. He's been pretty much everywhere on the map. He got his two buffs, and since then, he's been abusing that early game power of Pantheon, just moving absolutely everywhere. He motions towards the top lane, gets a wild beam with a back off of RF Legendary, giving that Aurelia a little bit of needed breathing room in this top lane matchup, especially since Maokai, he's already gone back and picked up a Ruby Crystal for himself. But one thing to keep in mind, despite the early pressure coming out from Pantheon, we do see Trick up to level 5 already with 27 CS to Pantheon's 8. Maybe Pantheon's, you know, ganking a little too much and sacrificing too much of his own jungle in order to get his lanes ahead. Well, Pantheon also hasn't gone back and bought any items off of anything, and he did not get an assist for that mid lane kill that Voidboy had on the outplay, so... Oh, that's a good point, Sifa. He's about 20 CS behind because of this, but he is potentially going to pick up a kill here in this mid lane matchup. Strop is dropping down extremely low. Voidboy's clone actually going after Zed here. Trick2G is in the fray as well. Looks like Voidboy and Sicko Scott continue to chase after Strop is while this is happening. Bottom lane, we saw Matt Life dropping extremely, extremely low. Bive is now roaming up, trying to help out with Strop is here. Zed's able to use the Living Shadow to get away back towards Trick2G, but he's taking a lot of damage from Voidboy here. A stun to go forward from Sicko Scott, but it's another kill for Voidboy. No assist on that one. Another solo kill for him and boy boy playing so patient there knowing that all he needed to do was keep auto attacking trick 2g afraid to go in because of the pantheon follow-up giving themselves excellent options on boy boy's side you know if dudier comes in they kill udier if zed goes in they kill zed and there's no option there they have to just take you know the zed kill and that's really the only option that they had excellent excellent play from boy boy's side well, now he has Voiboy and the Voice Scouts at 2 and 0. Both kills on their captain and mid laner, Voiboy. 32 CS compared to the 19 of Strompist on Zed right now. 
definite edges in the mid lane for their side. But like we said, this jungle play from Tick 2G, he was there pretty much to kind of dissuade Pantheon from ganking, not really applying all too much pressure himself, but he was continuously farming while Pantheon was moving around the map and has nothing really to show for it. Pantheon's got pick, gone back, picked up his Ranger's Trailblazer, has one of his long swords for Warrior already in his inventory, but Trick 2G has his Ranger's Trailblazer boots and a dagger on his side probably gonna be building up towards that devourer so advantages in the jungle for tricks team yeah and those boots are gonna be huge at this point i mean combined with that bear stance he's gonna be able to clear the jungle that much faster and pantheon you know already having a hard time clearing through his jungle already kind of you know struggling between jungling and providing map pressure trick g just gets to keep applying pressure he doesn't have to worry about it except if he doesn't gank soon this mid lane looks like it's gonna be going hard in the favor of boy boy uh you know Level 6 to Zed's level 5, even once Zed gets ult, like, is he going to be able to DAPS down this LeBlanc who has such a large advantage over him? Well, we do have, looks like, a 41 to 33 CS advantage for Boy Boy. His fruits of labor have been double Doran's ring, a cloth armor, and amplifying tome. Going to be building up towards that Seeker's arm guard. So he's definitely going to be getting the resistances he needs against this. I can hold all the swords at all times. A Zed build coming out from Strompus so far. As he has three long swords in inventory, probably going to be going towards Vampiric Scepter and Brutalizer, respectively, with those. But he's still a pretty long way away from both of those items at this point because he's just maybe being kept down in that mid lane so hard. He's technically too short of ideal, because he wants to get that Hex Drinker, which is one. He wants to get that Brutalizer, which is another two. And then he wants to get that Cutlass, which is another two. Five. We need five long swords, please. Which I imagine he'll inevitably get to. But three at this point, not offering a whole lot of stats, but does let him trade a little bit, at least with Voiboy. Well, Voivo goes over to his blue buff, picks that one up from Sicko Scott. Sicko Scott level 5. In the meantime, Trick 2G level 7 already on Udyr. He is making his way down towards bot lane. Looks like Pantheon might be heading back towards another repeat visit to that mid lane area, or at least clearing out these pink wards over there to try to establish a bit of dragon control. Scuttle Crab, as well as three pink wards from Voivo's team, have gone down around that dragon pit, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them maybe put a little bit of pressure on Trick's jungle and then go over there. Actually, Voivo, two chains right there, picks up a killing spree as he just evaporates Trick from his jungle. Yeah, and despite the fact that Trick does have a much better performance here in the jungle so far, you know, much more able to use his map awareness and his jungle skill, you know, he still did miscalculate there, and when Boy Boy's this far ahead, pretty much just gets to blow him up, especially considering that Trick 2G doesn't really have any items at this point. I mean, all of his items just offer him jungle clear, and not really any defensive stats, which he desperately needs against a LeBlanc that's now 3-0. and zero. Well, with the enemy jungler down, Voiboy's team, despite having a Pantheon, are not very quick to jump on that dragon. That may be because of all this pressure Zerbic and Bive have been exerting on the enemy bottom lane. Level 6 on Graze, level 5 on Janna. Same thing for the AD carry and support on the flip side. But Soraka constantly being bursted down. They continue to attack Lucian, force Soraka to heal him back up to full life, and then burst the low HP Soraka. So it's a lot of trading down here from the Graze Janna bottom lane. Like you said, those shields and buckshots just paying off dividends. Mm-hmm. And one of the big things that I was worried about with this pick was, you know, like, is Matt Life going to be able to use it to the same way that he gets to use this Thresh pick or this Blitzcrank pick that he loves so much? And he, you know, he isn't performing as well as we did see him. Now, it is still early in the game. We may see more from him later. And we do see that Dragon coming out for the team as well. So, small advantages, but not in the bot lane. Can Matt Life step up here? Well, power of the Pantheon pick is the fact that he can just do Dragon all by his lonesome starting at level 2. So, level 5 or not, he's going to be able to take that one down all for himself. 8% AD, 8% AP across the board for Void Boy's team. And that's going to be a lot, especially on that 3-0 LeBlanc in the mid lane that they currently have. Top lane has been a bit of a wet noodle fight. A wild Mimo struggling, though. Down almost 20 CS to the Aurelia coming out from RF Legendary Phage. Pieces of what looks to be the rest of Trinity Force slowly accumulating the inventory for RF Legendary. The Catalyst, the Protector, and Boots, as well as a flat crystalline flask, have been picked up for the side of a wild Mimo. Both top laners do have their teleport available. There is a ward behind Matt Life and Ethel, but Trick 2G up there to relieve a little bit of pressure. We'll have to see if maybe that's going to be a focus here. Collateral damage came out bottom lane as well. Zerbic is trying to clear this out as quickly as possible. Looks like they just want to go back bottom lane. And that makes sense. And in this top lane, we do see RF Legendary playing so well. You know, he has such a commanding top laner. Trades perfectly pretty much every time and really confident in his champion there. You did see him suffering earlier, but that's just because of the nature of Aurelia. But now that he's getting more into these mid-game levels, level 9 now, so he has one max ability, going with that hidden style for uh, sustain. He's pretty much set at this point, unless Trick2G comes in here. 
No, he is going to want to get a one auto attack down. The man drop is coming in from Pantheon, though. Soraki Hill from Cross the Map gets RF Legendary back up behind his tower. The flash is brim, though. Trick 2G has to flash out from this one as well. The gank is being turned around, and from the mid lane, here comes Voiboy. Boy. Sinko Scott getting turned upon, though. Root split storm. Trick 2G comes in, picks up a kill. A double kill picked up there as the Phoenix stance winds up taking down Aurelia, but Voiboy Boy comes in. He's on a rampage right now. Red buff acquired now. A wild Mimo knows he can't get away from this one. Trying to lock up Voiboy Boy for as long as possible as the Death Mark comes in. Boy Boy's gonna wind up picking up a kill down onto a wild Mimo though, but the shutdown spree goes over the Strompus. 500 much needed gold goes over to Zed. Across the board though, it's still a two for three trade in favor of Trick 2G's team. Yeah, and smart play from Voiboy Boy there, you know, rotating up, but the response from Strompus just as good, you know, despite the fact that Voiboy Boy did dodge both of those shurikens after getting deathmarked, his health was so low from fighting that Maokai that it just did not matter. A single auto attack plus that deathmark proc just popped him right there. Now, it's really tough for them because Maokai went down too, so <clears throat> these awkward trades are still slowly going towards the favor of Voiboy's Boy's side. We do see the TP coming down in the bot lane. Yeah, all these teleports. The Monsoon actually knocks our Legendary back towards Zermic. He gets another Blade Surge down here. Can he get one more auto attack off? The dash away from Graze. The Arf Legendary get knocked against the wall by the Arcane Smash. The Jana Tornado goes across as well. In comes Trick 2G. The stun on the I Am Matlip. Collateral damage gets Wild Mimo with the last hit there for the kill. Ethel now getting stunned up here. Godzier in the fray is going to get taken down by RF Legendary. It's a one for one trade in the bottom lane. Ethel RF Legendary extremely low, but with Voiboy Boy on the backup plan here, it looks like the rest of Trick Squad just gets out of there. Yeah, and despite the fact that Trick did get that double kill there, he still doesn't have any tanky stats. Now, I understand him building Phage early. It does give him a lot more options to chase, but it's really hard for him to go into multi-person teamfights. I'm sure he can out-duel anyone on the team, but the question is, when you get into those 3v3 situations or those 2v2 situations, you know, can Udyr survive a lot of that burst damage that's coming out from Lucian? Well, a lot of the situation we see in Trick in, it's how can he escape a 1v5 chase situation. So we're not really used to him seeing jumping into the fray like that, picking up some kills, or at least trying to do what he can to tank in a team fight right here. And like you did say, those duties are really going to go a little bit more over towards Maokai. As Trick going for a bit more of damage first in his build. He does have the phage, and he's completed the Devourer, so he's going to be going back to the stack plan here. Picking up his Gromp for himself, got 11 stacks on that one, and a blue buff might be going his way. Mid lane though, Voiboy does get hit up with a death mark. Zanya's Hourglass already already acquired though just dodged out the damage from that one by going golden boy boy is gonna get knocked out by arcane smash though wild mimo picks himself up a nice kill right there but the man trap from sicko scott is enough to pick up a kill onto strompus it's a one for one trade but none of the kills go to the opposing mid laner an excellent, excellent patience there from a wild Mimo. He did not go in on that Soraka, wasn't too eager, made sure that his ult, when it popped, would hit Voiboy, Boy, whether he was forward trying to attack the Zed or when he swapped back to that distortion. Uh, either way, no matter where he was, when he popped that ult, Voiboy Boy was going down. So excellent play from a wild Mimo. Good response from Sicko Scott to make sure they traded one for one, but a little tough for Voiboy Boy there, despite having the Zonia's Hourglass still going down. Yeah, he's got huge item advantages over his opponent's mid laner right now. The Zanya's Hourglass is basically going to be the anti-Zed button right now for Voiboy. Boy. So all of those trades, if that had been a straight one-on-one, -on -one, Strompus definitely would have been on the losing end of that duel, specifically because of that activatable like, item. But with the help from a wild Mimo, who was able to turn that one around into a one-for-one, -one, and that's what it is. It's a team game here with League of Legends on Summoner's Rift, so we're going to have to see here which one becomes the better team player. We did say that Zed has split-pushing potential, and of course is able to really assassinate some of those carries. LeBlanc, she doesn't have a reset mechanic like it, like a Katarina like Void Boy played yesterday. We're going to have to see how effective that burst damage is going to be and who he's going to be choosing to use it on. Yeah, and one of the most difficult things about this game for Zed specifically is that... Uh-oh. Stuff going in on Sicko Scott here. Sicko Scott does flash out and is healed by Soraka, though, to save him. Yeah, the Wish comes out, and in comes Voiboy Boy here. Bive actually trying to duck away here from the distortion game out from Voiboy. Boy. One chain goes out, but he gets knocked by the, back by the Monsoon here. Another chain does wind up missing on the Strompus. There's some trading going down in the top lane, too, between two big tanks. Trick 2G on the enemy side of the jungle over by the enemy blue buff does dodge out from the Star Call from Soraka, so he's not going to get hit up with damage, not going to heal back on that Soraka. That's a bit of ring around the Riz. He, nobody really winds up dying or taking that much damage. Yeah, and at this point, Zed really needs something to get ahead. Like you said, he might be looking to split push now, but with not a huge item advantage and with Aurelia slowly getting tankier and tankier, eventually that Aurelia is going to be able to duel him. And once she's able to, uh, it pretty much shut down all of his split pushing potential. 
Oh, top lane here, Aurelia has hit crucial level 11 compared to Maokai, who is still only level 10. So the duel going slightly in favor of Aurelia, just due to the fact that Heaton style is going to be healing her up for almost 28, 30 HP every single auto attack when it's active. So RF Legendary definitely with some sustained damage. Wild Mimo actually goes in with a twisted advance over here, gets the arcane smash down. RF Legendary pretty low on mana at the same exact time, though. Mid lane is going to wind up going down in favor of Trick 2G's team. Top lane, the kill is going to go over to a Wild Mimo. Dragon was going down to Sicko Scott, but they're able to pick up the mid lane tower in response for that one. It's a kill in a tower for the price of Dragon here, the second one actually on Void Boy Squadron. So they trade some map pressure for extra damage to monsters and minions. Yeah, and excellent, excellent play from Wild Mimo seeing that despite the fact that there's a huge CS advantage in the favor of RF Legendary, he had about 1,800 gold in the bank before he died there that he just had not spent as opposed to Maokai who had about 600. So Maokai's effective items during that fight much, much better and obviously coming in with more HP and, and better stats for that tower dive and very close still but good call from a Wild Mimo. Well, we see, do see that a tower has been responded upon by Voy Scouts here. They take the mid lane tower in response, so it's 1-1 one, one in towers across the board, both of them in mid lane. Like we said, two dragons have been taken down for Voy Boy and the red team, zero so far for the Trick 2G army on the blue side. It's seven kills to six, but the difference in farm between top lane is mitigated by the difference in farm in the jungle here for the side of Trick 2G's team, as the gold advantage, a couple hundred actually in favor of the blue team. Yeah, and I'm excited to see the blue team pull ahead a little bit here. I'm hoping that Trick2G and his team can use this to their advantage. A lot of that is on Maokai in the top lane, and it'll be interesting to see how they utilize it, especially with so many assassins that it's going to be hard for Maokai to interact with um, outside of just using his ult to protect mm. his carries. Void Boy is coming in strong there. Trick will run out, though. Yeah, the two captains going at it. Trick 2G does pop the shield. The pings are going down. Bai is going to come over with the shield of his own. Trick 2G gets a lot of extra HP off of the turtle stance and the Janna shield. Culling comes out here from Ethel, trying to get some damage on the Trick 2G. Blocked up right there by Bai. So Trick 2G not going to go down on the captain war, but that's a scary amount of damage coming out from Boy Boy. Yeah, and keep in mind, RF Legendary is just sitting in there in a bush, waiting for something to happen, waiting for someone to overextend. And I'm, it looks like they might have an idea. They are pinging it out. They are aware of the brush gank. But at this point in the game, RF Legendary might be able to dive them anyway. Well, showing some patience, RF Legendary waits in that brush. Bottom looks like they're both going back. So the teleport will be used to get back to top lane as a wild Mimo is threatening to attack that tower with a wave of minions up there. The bottom tower does go down in favor of the Voy Boy team on the red side. So it's two towers compared to one right now. And now the gold, a couple hundred in favor of the Voice Scouts. Yeah, and I imagine it'll be swinging back and forth like this as we progress the game, just based on which teams are prioritizing which objectives. And the really interesting thing will be, like, who's going to contest the Baron in this game? It is coming up shortly. Neither team is really equipped to take it, but, you know, whoever makes Vis Baron Vision a priority is going to have a huge advantage here. Um, we do see more and more that Boy Boy is just becoming bigger and bigger. He's got those boots of mobility, definitely looking to make plays, despite the fact that Zed has now finished, you know, his Blade of the Rune King and his Brutalizer. He still doesn't have Tier 2 boots and still doesn't really have much options against Boy Boy. Uh, Boy Boy doing about, like, two-thirds of health when that last trade we saw. Uh -oh. um, where. We'll have to see how much damage Voiboy can do, but Trick 2G dodging absolutely everything from both Voiboy and I am Matt Life. Some fancy footwork coming out there, and that's Voiboy who had the boots of mobility over Trick's Merc Treads, too. And this is pretty huge for uh, for Trick 2G. It gives him a lot of opportunity for outplay on that Udyr when, you know, so much of his opponent's damage is skill shot based. One of the reasons we saw him go down so much in the games prior was because most of the damage he was suffering from was from a Quirky, you know, all auto attack based. Mm. Wild Mimo stuck around top lane a little bit too long. Thought he was still in that little wet noodle fight between him and RF Legendary. And then along came a Boy Boy and down went the tree. Team's kind of just running around the map at this point, looking for anything they can get their hands on. It's it's pretty chaotic, and I'm wondering like which team is gonna group up first and like contest these objectives, but we do see Pantheon in the bot lane. We see a lot of aggression in the bot lane now. 3v3 fight looks like it's being made out. Zed kind of starting to rotate down, but very cautious. Not sure exactly where LeBlanc is until she shows in mid right now. RF Legendary also just one hit left on that top lane tower before it goes down. Wise is going to let it execute as many minions as possible, not only to reset the wave, but deny as much farm as possible and experience towards that Maokai when he does get back up there. Bottom lane, there's a lot of action going on. We did see enemy junglers meeting down there. Enemy AD carries and supports still trading back and forth to this one. We're cresting about the 20 and a half minute mark right here. 31.4k is the gold for Void Boy's red team. 29.4k on the blue team for Trick 2G squadron. 
It's about a 2,000 gold lead ever so slightly in Void Boy's team's favor as they do have multiple towers down compared to the one of Trick 2G in this team. But this trading damage going down on bottom lane, Zerbic, ooh, he puts out the collateral damage with just not enough to burn through the remaining health bars coming out there from Lucian. Yeah, and despite Boy Boy's huge kill advantage, I'm I'm concerned about how these team fights are gonna unfold. They do have a lot of CC on the side of Boy Boy's team, but almost even more, pretty much, on the side of Trick Two G's. So they've got the Udyr Bear stance. They've got all the Maokai locked down. Janna too, with her ability to both either disengage or engage a fight. Um, really hoping to see a team fight here, but both teams seem to be content to just continue rotating, trying to find a pick on the other side. Well, they're using the Pantheon Man Drop and the Roaming Void Boy with these boots of mobility to try to catch as many people out of position on Trick's team as possible. And when Trick's go-to strategy is to kind of split push and run around the map, it's not too bad if you wind up catching him in your jungle, using those abilities just to absolutely nuke him down as quickly as possible. That's how they've been able to capitalize and get these towers. That's how they've been able to get these dragons. And that is actually going to be an objective on the map back up in about 20 seconds. Now, we did have a wild Mima left to his own devices in top lane for a little while. He was able to finally push on that low HP top lane tower, giving Trick 2G's team some much needed global gold, closing the gap to only about a thousand in favor of Void Boy's team. Now, teleport is available for Maokai, but not yet available for Aurelia. Everybody is moving down towards this dragon pit area. One second left, and there is the spawn. The warding, though, definitely in favor of the red team. We'll have to see what's going to wind up breaking out around here. Void Boy does find Trick 2G as he runs into RF Legendary. He gets absolutely bursted down. No smite left available for the red blue team right now. Strompus goes in, but Strompus has to run away as the culling is being used on him. A wild Mimo in the thick of things right here, dealing a lot of damage to RF Legendary. RF Legendary is kind of tanky. Monsoon winds up going down as Zed tries to go in. Wild Mimo gets separated because of that. He winds up going down. Five gets chained up. Boy Boy dashes in with the distortion. It's going to be another kill picked up right there. It's three kills for none so far in favor of the red team. RF Legendary is going to want to get a death marked up by Strompus, but he winds up going down. That's a one for one trade, adding to the fray. Four kills now for Boy Boy's team. They're trying to dive the second tier bottom tower, trying to get a kill on Zervic. The flash away, but Boy Boy goes back with the distortion it's an ace does pick up a kill on Lucian at the absolute last second but that's overall a five for two in favor of Void boys team and they're setting sights on their third dragon stack yeah and trick g just not really expecting that aurelia from the side played a little bit too forward and was bursted down instantly because of it you did talk earlier about how much damage the can put out despite the fact that she no longer has to silence and the damage is huge we see her just now not afraid at all of trick g knowing she can run away doing a ton of damage here but she may get locked up by this Maokai pick. We'll have to see how he plays this. Uh, Sika Scott's around the corner, though. Maokai and Udi are trying to make the run around over here. Pantheon and LeBlanc trying to run away. If they can force Void Boy's team back, that will be the fact that they can get a dragon. But Arp Legendary teleporter back into the fray. Looks like Trick 2G has to use this flash to get away to try to live and fight another day. But it looks like the rest of Void Boy Squadron now is coming back off of their respawns and their recalls. Getting back into the bot lane and establishing control over that dragon pit area. Pink Ward is still alive in the pit. The dragon gets aggroed up onto I am Matt Life getting one or two little pokes over there. A ward goes over the wall from five. So Trick 2G, they're still contesting this. They don't want to give it that third buff. They don't want the extra move speed on the side of Void Boy. Yeah, and they have to be really careful about that too because, I mean, like we talked about last time when Trick 2G played Udyr, uh, it's really hard for him to catch people already when there's a team with so much CC to stop him. And, you know, once you get that 5% movement speed, it gets even harder. Uh, pretty much the only person who really has to be scared of the Udyr at this point is Lucian and maybe a little bit of Soraka too. Well, a lot of it is Rock, a little bit of Lucian. Ooh, Ethel, you got caught out of position yesterday a lot too, and here Stromp is able to pick up an easy solo kill snipe there with the death mark onto the AD carry from the enemy team. It's a 4v5 situation if they're able to group up around this dragon fight area, but that's no ultimate on Zed. Very low health bars for himself. We'll see what Trick 2G and his team try to do over here. Voiboy, in the meantime, his team is getting the blue buff for themselves over here. It looks like they have started up on this dragon. Everybody except for Trick looks like he's in the area. Actually, Trick has shown up to this fight as well. Trick's away in the top lane. He's not here whatsoever. Zervik's gonna go in there. Picks up a kill on Sicko Scott. A lot of damage goes down. The dragon's still attacking as well. Arf Legendary is able to pick up a kill on the low HP Strompus. Voivod actually going in, but he gets knocked. He gets tied up by Maokai. Zonny's Hourglasses goes up, but Pive with the Swag Tornado picks up a kill. Matt Life's gonna wind up going down as well. And in a straight up 4v4 fight with a low HP Zed, that's going to be Voivod's team going down. Trick, meanwhile, is pushing up top lane. He's going down to an inhibitor tower. The first dragon of the game looks Looks like it's going to be picked up here by Trick 2G's team as RF Legendary runs down onto the captain of the blue team. Trick 2G, is he going to want to get away from this one? Signs point to no. The Equilibrium Strike gets to slow one more tap there in the back from RF Legendary. Picks up a kill. But what a turnaround in favor of the blue team. Yeah, and this is 
just so good from them. They knew that without that Lucian there, that they didn't have the sustained damage necessary to win that fight. They utilized that Janna pick fully to stop LeBlanc from bursting someone down. Voiboy probably overestimating his damage a little bit there, and, you know, just watching Pantheon get blown up, Sicko Scotch was just rough. Well, there's only one more tower in that top lane there for the side of Voiboy, so... Chick2G, he's been pounding on them all day. He's trying to open those gates. He backdoored an inhibitor twice in the first game of the night against Night Blue's team. Can they do it again here? With that dragon buff on their side, damage counts have been evened up just a little bit because now they both have the 8% extra AD and AP. Boy Boy's team was denied the extra move speed. They only have the second buff to deal 15% bonus damage to minions and monsters. Slight pushing power on Boy Boy's side, but much needed statistical benefits for the side of Trick2G. G's team. Boy Boy trying to keep up the pressure by going into the enemy jungle. Strompus and Zerbic here were able to secure their own red buff. They're going to sweep away some of these wards. Boy Boy's team is trying to place down, but good on the red team. They're still trying to command pressure saying, hey, you might have tried to even things up. The gold counts, we can't see them. We don't know that you have a couple hundred gold in their favor. We're up 15 to 12. We still want to play the aggressor in this matchup. Yeah, but they have to be careful playing the aggressor because if Ethel ever gets caught out, I mean, all it's going to take is that Zed ultimate to kill him, because at this point, Zed is so big with that Yomu's and that Blade of the Rune King that if you don't have that Soraka to heal you, and if you don't have an Hourglass like Boy Boy, you're pretty much hopeless. And Ethel's known for overextending, like you mentioned earlier, so as long as the team stays together uh, and plays to their strength and team synergy, this should be pretty good for them. Ooh, Ghost Flare is active there by Strompus. He gets stunned up by Pantheon, though, and Boy Boy's able to take him down. No idea what Strompus is trying to do there, but you know what they're doing? Distracting for the king. S stop the boards, boys! Trick2G is trying to open the gate's top lane. RF Legendary has gone back, though. This inhibitor there is taking a lot of damage. We have on the bottom lane. Trick2G, his team, is falling apart. Zerbic and Bive trying to stay alive. Ethel's able to try to nuke them down, but he's not going to wind up taking them out. Meanwhile, Udir has opened the gates in top lane. The inhibitor goes down. RF Legendary getting the Equilibrium Psych slow, slow, the random one's omen slow goes down as well, but with Bear Stance active, looks like trick 2 g is going to run away to try to fight another day. Bottom lane, second tier tower goes down, the inhibitor tower is being threatened by Boy Boy Squad, but they're without an inhibitor suddenly in the top lane. Yeah, and despite the fact that RF Legendary was stopped from recalling by Stompus' aggressive play, you know, it did end up costing them a turret. However, they are up an inhibitor now on the side of Trick2G, and that's going to be huge for them. That alone might provide enough pressure for Trick2G to continue split pushing, while the rest of his team can either defend or look for those pickoffs. Oh man, <laughs> looks like uh, Trick is still trying to bite off more than he can chew, going for that second tier mid tower. RF Legendary just isn't able to really solidify a kill on him, so Trick is left to run rampant on the enemy side of the map. This is letting his team kind of push back against that bottom lane push. They did lose their bottom lane inhibitor tower, but their inhibitor is still alive. Boy Boy's team, they don't have an inhibitor in that top lane anymore, so now Trick2G's team Gold advantage, not in their favor anymore. This one's a little bit more in favor of Void Boy's team after that fight, but he's doing the diss track. He flashes out of the man trap there from Sicko Scott. Two members now have been brought up into that top lane. Pings are going down. That mid lane tower has only like 200 HP left. That's just going to get melted underneath the the combined efforts of the rest of the 2G army. A wild Bima goes in to play zone defense the same exact time though. Strompus goes down onto Ethel. They're able to pick up a kill there. RF Legendary and Sicko Scott trying to go in. A wild Bima actually gets out alive. How the hell did he survive tanking through three members of Boy Boy's team, including the boy himself? Wild Mimo trying his hardest to get away. RF Legendary flashes in, gets the equilibrium strike slow down. Wild Mimo, is he going to go down? Tanky Tree does fall in the forest. Boy Boy picks up that kill, and it's a one for tower trade for Team 2G. You know, an excellent play from both of these mid laners. We saw Voiboy Boy instantly use that distortion to jump away and pull that Maokai under turret. And then we also saw Strompus go down to so little health before swapping back to his shadow at the last possible second and running away while also, you know, securing the kill on Ethel. Oh, Boy Boy coming in with the double distortion here. Doesn't want to go in back though, but Super Minions almost took down a Nexus Tower in Voy Boy's team's base. It got to 160 HP. They gotta worry about that one. Not only are they gonna have super minions to worry about there, but with Chick 2G not visible on the map to them right now, they gotta worry where that Udir is going to be. He can come in back throw that tower extremely easily. Does he actually have the elixir of iron uh, active for himself? I don't believe he does quite yet. So he's he still doesn't gonna be able to chunk through that tower super super easily. But they gotta keep tabs on Trick. They gotta figure out where this Udir is going to be because right now they're hemorrhaging right now. There's a, a almost dead Nexus Tower, and that is definitely going to be the target for the blue team. 
Yeah, and one of the, the amazing things about this is, the, you know, despite the fact that Trick 2G's team may not always find the right engages and may play a little bit too aggressive, always looking to brawl rather than, like, organize team fights, when they have an inhibitor down, it always plays in their favor because as long as the enemy is fighting you, they cannot defend their inhibitor from those super minions that are just so, so powerful. Well, it looks like Voidboy has found the enemy team captain here, as Trick2G and Voidboy are the ones fighting down the bottom lane, but a pause comes out from the boy himself, and immediately a wild meme goes, oh, forfeit, GG, guys. But that is not the case. It looks like, uh... I don't exactly know what's going down. Uh, I guess somebody has infiltrated the Voidboy team communication system, and they are uh, working on getting them out of their channel. A little unfortunate. Yeah, probably, you know, someone determined to get in there. Someone determined to show the love for the boy. Or maybe someone from the Trick 2G army sneaking their way in. Let them remind them that the gates are open and they got to respect. Or maybe just a friend being a troll. Who knows? But at this <laughs> point, you can't really have that in a game this serious. Especially when Void Boy's team, you know, kind of... Despite their pretty strong leads uh, in the early game, not really playing out into this late game. Excellent play from Trick 2G. Some pretty strong mechanical play from Strompest and... Overall, really good rotational play from the team as a whole. Um, at this point, a while Momo was using that early game lead. He got so well to be so tanky. I mean, we talked about how he got away from so many people in that last engagement. Did end up going down, I believe. But in the end, he tanked for so long that that in inner tower almost went down. And if they get another fight like that before the inhib comes back up, it might be GG for uh, Trick's team. And it's really difficult to cut down this tree despite the fact that he was down currently 249 CS compared to 168. Rod of Ages and that Frozen Heart are the only the only really big item purchases he has giving him those stats. So he's got a lot of armor, he's got a lot of health, but he doesn't necessarily have the magic resistance to go straight up against Voiboy. So as long as Voiboy is not in the equation, that Maokai with the Ventral Maelstrom is not really going to be taking a lot of damage from Pantheon, Lucian, Aurelia, these AD an auto attack based champions as long as he's got that frozen heart on yeah and despite the fact that lucian has now finished his bloodthirster giving him a little bit more effective health he still has to be really careful for that zed because on the opposite side zed has finished that last whisper and is basically going to be doing true damage with that death mark active running away now a little bit careful but i'm excited to see what the zed play can bring out and i'm i'm worried that ethel will get caught out again and that that may end up being the downfall of this void boy lineup I'm a little more worried, too. There's actually two Frozen Hearts on the side of Trick 2G's team, because if you got one, why not get two? Man, not the most efficient itemization, or at least the efficient spending of gold, but hey, if Trick's split-pushing the whole time, he's going to want one, him, one all to himself, regardless of that fact. But with double Frozen Heart, with double 90, 99 or 100 armor items on the team, Going for that Bloodthirster for the shield and survivability means they have nothing to pierce through all that armor on Lucian. There's two Last Whispers on the side of Trick 2G's team. They're going to be cutting through defenses, whereas Ethel, he's really going to have to be protected for a prolonged team fight to wear down on these tanks. And we saw it pay a toll just this past fight where Maokai didn't go down because of it. Trick actually, while the dragon is live, trying to solo it for himself. Sicko's God is down here. I don't know if Pantheon can solo this Udi or actually. They're going to be trading some damage back and forth with this one. The rest of their teams are Push up towards the top side of the map. An assassin duel in mid lane. Trump is going on. Void boy, void boy, get the Duke and Jai with the distortion. The Zanya's hourglass. RF legendary picks up a kill. And now Trick to Cheese team. They really got to run and scatter. Pings are going down. Are they going to wind up trying to go for the respawning inhibitor, which is now up? on the map. Actually, there it is. Two seconds after that. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to. They're going to wind up scouting away. A wild Nemo and Strompist are down. The Dragon Sight still going on between Trick 2G and Sicko Scott. Trick 2G takes it! That's two Dragons apiece now for either team. They both have pushing power. They both have the 8% AD and AP. That's actually a really solid steal there for Trick. Yeah, especially because his whole goal this game has been to split push and to provide that pressure, whereas Voidboy's team hasn't really gotten to utilize that buff outside of maybe clearing their jungle faster. One thing I do want to comment on is how good that Soraka pick was in that Assassin duel. When she came in and dropped down that Silence, Stompus was powerless to use any of his cooldowns to try to save himself and just ended up dying to Voidboy. Oh, this Baron's going to be going down pretty quick for Voidboy's team, though. It is going to wind up going down to Sick of Scott. He spikes that one away. A Wild Mimo did teleport into the fray. Now they're on to Ethel. He's stuck in the back of the Baron pit, but a Wild Mimo's the only one over there. Zerbe's getting jumped on here by RF Legendary. Strompus goes in on to Voidboy. Voidboy's taking on low, but he's not dead yet. In goes a Wild Mimo. He is able to shut down on Voidboy. Ethel, though, has picked up that kill on Strompus. A Wild Mimo is going to wind up going down as well. Now it's up to Zerbe and Bide because where did Trick go? Wait, 
the proof recalls are going off. RF Legendary is there to stop Trick from trying to open the gates back up in top lane. They did not stop the Ports boys. But Zerbic flashes in, tries to get a kill on Matt Like The red buff will tick away, but he sacrificed his own life for that one. Bive is going to get the tornado while Sicko Scott and Ethel can't chase down onto that one. But all in all, it's barren for the team of Boy Boy, and they pick themselves up three kills for the price of two. Yeah, and that was a really interesting choice from Zerbic to go in so far, you know, kind of made the same mistake that Ethel's been making a lot this game, you know, in the form of overextending, but because he traded one for one, it was not the worst thing for them, and because they have the majority of their lanes pushed out, it doesn't look like Boy Boy's team's going to be able to respond much to it, so not too much loss there for that one for one, but if he keeps being aggressive like that, it may end up costing his team the next team fight. Well, right now his team's got to be careful about where that fight is going to take place as well. They still have two towers that are left on the outer side of the map albeit they are the inner mid and top lane towers so they have those shields available the slight extra regeneration there's a barren buff on the side of the boy scouts right now that's going to be giving the minions extra pushing power they're going to be equal in terms of dragon buffs but those supercharged minions are going to be really difficult to clear out they have a zed and they have a graze for a little bit of wave clear on their side but you really got to think about this. How is the dive situation going to come into effect? If those towers get pushed down by those minions, if they drop low enough where there's an opportunity for Pantheon to Grand Skyfall, it's going to be devastating. But a lot of burst damage coming out here from Zerbeck. He's able to drop Matt Life down to blinking red bars of HP. And I guess the first push is thwarted. And uh-oh, Stromp is trying to go in the backside here. He's forcing those recalls out. Improved recall from Baron. Definitely, definitely hampering the gate strategy right now. Yeah, and we talked about how the Zed pick might want to split push, but now it looks like both the Zed and the Udi are going to try for it, while the remainder of the lineup just holds towers. I mean, with a Janna, with a Maokai, and a Graves, you may not have the best wave clear, but you can very easily protect something. As long as you're trying to force a dive, you have a pretty solid chance at taking a couple kills or distracting them long enough for your allies who are split pushing to get a tower. <clears throat> Stromp is going one on one against RF Legendary. You talked about this earlier, Sifa. RF Legendary is so beefy right now. Zed can't possibly duel against him right now. Level 18 compared to level 16. RF Legendary just takes him down with ease. Yeah, and Lakey Morelia's damage is so, so high, and it's all auto attack based, which is Zed's, you know, he can outplay, he can dodge so many skill shots, but if he can't get out of auto attack range, he can't dodge auto attacks, and he's going to die almost instantly to that Aurelia pick. And let's face it, right now Zed really needs to rely on the rest of the tanky members of his team to absorb that damage and provide that auto attack debuff in the fact that they have Frozen Heart. Speaking of one of the guys at Frozen Heart, looks like Trick 2G here. Three chains so far I've seen coming out from Boy Boy. Another distortion comes out trying to chase him away. A fourth chain lands here. Sicko Scott's going to be going in with a man drop as well, but this is Trick 2G. There's four members chasing down on him in the bottom lane. RF Legendary though, he's trying to do his best Trick 2G impression in the top lane here. Split pushing away on that one, drawing the rest of the blue team up towards the top lane. Trick 2G activating Turtle Stance, activating Bear Stance, dodging out on one more chain, but Ethel is going to get the culling before a while. Nemo can come in and save our captain for the blue team here. That's a kill picked up for Boy Boy's squad and threat diverted for the rest of the backdoor strategy. And it's so hard now for Trick2G to get away from Boy Boy because he has 40% cooldown reduction with that blue buff between the, you know, between the Deathfire Grasp and the Morella Nomicon and also mobility boots. So he's always able to use that distortion into those ethereal chains and pretty much maybe not always get the snare off, but to keep him slowed constantly while the rest of his team can, you know, get into position and follow up. Well, right now with Trick 2G off the rift for 20 more seconds, Void Boy's team trying to breathe a sigh of relief, but Ethel here scouts out that Strumpus might be trying to fill in the role for his captain, his captain trying to get over the wall with that Zed pickup, but it's not going to work in this one. Kind of reminds me of High at Worlds as he's flashing away, using the Ghost Blade to try to run, trying to get in all these different backdoor James Bond secret Asian angles, but it's just not working out. Void Boy's team are hit to the tricks right now. They may not have the most vision on their side of the map. Uh, they got three wards down by their red buff area, none over by their blue buff area but that's okay because the open inhibitor is in the top lane and it's only fallen down once so far so they've been good good at protecting it so far this game yeah and it's sad to see strompus give up that cooldown so easily boy boy might be getting cut out here though Ooh, he did Zonia's Hourglass, a lot of the burst damage coming out from Zerbic. The collateral damage was used. Now it's Trick 2G going up against RF Legendary. Trick with that Frozen Heart, like we said, a little bit better off in the trade situations. He's got tanky stats, he's got a Trinity Force, and he's able to go a bit better toe-to-toe -to -toe against this Aurelia than the Zed was able to in the split push. But the big focus is going to be Dragon Buff number three. It's coming up in 10 seconds, and we don't know which team is going to be getting it. Voiboy's in control of it right now. Both teams, two buffs apiece. This one's going to be the Moose Speed 
speed buff. This one's going to be very, very crucial for all the movements that are going on across the map. Trick is in the bottom lane. His team is pushing towards the mid lane. Voidboy's team was stuck over by the dragon area. RF Legendary is chasing after Trick. He does have his teleport available, but Trick has a stun. He could stop the Norelia from coming into a fight. The open inhibitor in top lane is a target for Strompus, Mimo, and Vibe. Only Voidboy is here. The gates are going to get opened in top lane for Trick 2G's team. Strompus takes that one down. Looks like Sika Scott goes in. In the meantime, Wild Mimo getting nuked down by Voidboy. He does go to the Twisted Advance. Winds up blocking out. Strompus in the meantime went down on the Sicko Scott with the Death Mark. Sicko Scott's going to survive. Mimo RF Legendary is able to outduel Trick 2G ever so slightly. Just a couple hundred HP left on that Aurelia. It's two kills from the price of an inhibitor, though, for Voidboy's team. They're going to have to be worried about that top lane now because that top lane inhibitor, it's down. It's gone. Yeah, and that Blade of the Rune King plus that Hidden Style is just so much sustain. On top of that, you do see that he burned the QSS cooldown, and it worked out pretty well for him. Ooh, Zerbic, the burst comes back up, and down goes Voidboy. That's a key component here. 10, 5, and 12 was Voidboy, and he's gone. RF Legendary, though, he's like, hey, you guys had an open inhibitor, too, in this bot lane here. Uh, what do you call that? Oh, open in the gates. Yeah, let me do that to you, too. RF Legendary is going to take down an inhibitor pretty much for free in this situation. No one able to respawn from Chick2G's team because they were too busy fighting over by the Baron buff area. Yeah, and that's tough. You gotta be tough for Trick 2G to get out dueled like that and then to instantly have his inhibitor taken down. It tough. Definitely a miscalculation by Trick 2G, and it's gonna be rough for him, despite the fact that both teams now have an inhibitor down. The third dragon is going to go over to Void Boy Squad, and that's gonna be huge. You know, just that movement speed alone is gonna give them such an advantage when it comes to rotational play and securing objectives. Yeah, so that third dragon buff now, you see the movement speed on everybody on the side of Voidboy's team. It's going to be really, really crucial. Like you said, the map movements, the hashtag rotations that are going on in this game have been crucial for both teams. With the extra movement speed, it's going to give you the edge on that one. See a teleport coming up from RF Legend. This Baron trying to get burst down as quickly as possible. About a thousand. Blue team's able to pick that one up, but the culling goes down. Bive is taken down extremely low. Ghostblade active from Strompus, but it's used in that retreat sense once again. RF Legendary and Matlife trying to just play some zone control, clear out the wards, but the Baron buff has been acquired by the side of Trick 2G and his army on the blue team. They are the ones with the strong minions. Compared to the extra movement speed now, Baron buff's looking pretty good. Yeah, 3k gold advantage and a move speed buff is probably not going to be enough to stop all those empowered minions. Like, we've talked about this earlier, but, you know, one of the big disadvantages that both sides have in this game is reliable, safe wave clear. And Boy Boy not really able going to be able to distortion to clear those waves when there's people standing on top of them, and burning the coaling to clear a wave isn't where you want to be, especially against those empowered minions when it might not even clear a whole wave. Oh, scuttle crab control being wrestled over here by team 2g as they are setting up some vision now that they have their baron buff the minions on their side going to be pushing top lane so the wave might be pushing against them over there but they're trying to get the mid and bottom lanes going boy boy did wind up using the zani's hourglass as soon as the death mark went down fight over by this blue buff area five and zerbix trying to deal as much damage as possible to the rf legendary they force him out of the fight a flash and a twisted advance onto ethel sickle scott their head picked up a kill onto strompus ethel being forced out of the fight lots of heals going down as well the wish from Soraka was used. Sicko Scott trying to get back into this fight. RF Legendary, is he going to go down? No, heals coming out from Soraka, keeping him alive. There's a heal on Mimo, though, at the same time. Sicko Scott is going to want to get in the stun, going back in. Voidboy dropped extremely low, but they're going to force away Zerbix and Bive at the same exact time. Trick 2G has the minions pushing down. He's going for a bottom inhibitor tower, pushing against enemy super minions. The inhibitor tower looks like it's going to go down, but with all the recalls coming in from Voidboy's side, he flashes in. He stuns Voidboy. He picks up a kill, an exit frag coming here from Trick 2G. He takes a tower down, but now he's got an obstacle named Ethel in his way. Lots of damage coming out from this Udyr pickup, though. Ethel callings the brush because, hey, maybe Trick's over there, even though he has a ward in it. Ethel, questionable calling right there, but Trick 2G, his team suffered heavy, heavy casualties, but because of his split pushing, because he's trying to open bottom lane gates now against enemy super minions, Boy Boy's team, they couldn't respond with anything off of that fight. Yeah, an excellent, excellent decision to make him trick. Good solo kill on Voidboy. Probably would have gotten the solo kill on Ethel if not for that QSS and that dash over the wall. Um, really a tough fight. This is what Trick2G wants to be doing, you know, providing this pressure, forcing teams to make, you know, maybe bad decisions or some kind of decision that uh, puts them at a disadvantage. And he definitely did it here where he took two towers in that instance. And despite the fact, like you said, that they lost the team fight, a pretty big advantage for them. Because once they get those two inhibitors, it's going to be really, really easy to get that third one regardless of what their team comp looks like and regardless of this small gold lead coming out from boy boy's side
Well, right now the gold advantage is on Voiboy's side. Two inhibitors are down, one in the top lane on Voiboy's team and one in the bottom lane on Trick's team. Those inhibitors are going to be respawning in just a little bit. We leave 30 seconds left on Voiboy's and that means there's about a minute left on the side for Trick 2Gs. But that's going to be two open inhibitors on Voiboy's side and we've kind of beaten the fact to death that's what trick 2g's team wants to pressure for though they are fine with moving around the map sacrificing deaths in order to get these open inhibitors that's their game plan that's the way it's been from the get-go the gold counts now they've reached the point where we're up to 70 plus thousand gold counts and it's only a 2000 gold advantage if that in favor of void boy squad Full item builds are coming out, and it's going to be a brawl, Sifa. Starting in this bottom lane, do you see Trick 2G actually getting a Blade of the Rune King and using the active to run away from RF Legendary? Yeah, and one of the big things to consider here is it's not just inhibitors on their priority list. They can take any objective they want. They have so many options with two champions who are incredibly good at split pushing, both Zed and Udyr. Um, they can pretty much play this however they want to, and it's really going to be on Voiboy's team to guess right or to get the vision control to know which decision their opponents are going to make. The Baron buff has just expired on the side of the Trick 2G army, so they're not going to have this extra minion pushing power, but we did see RF Legendary and Trick 2G. They went hard against each other, and they just wound up healing up against each other with bl trading blows. Actually, Ethel getting a lot of damage out on the Strompus. He is able to get the wish out from Soraka, so he's going to survive through that death mark. Strompus was trying to go for the inhibitor, maybe tried a little bit too hard here. In the meantime, mid lane here, Monsoon is used to get Boy Boy off of Zerbix here, while Mima wound up going in with a twisted advance on him. Boy Boy's dropped extremely low. A duel on the Bot lane results in Trick2G forcing RF Legendary back at extremely low HP. Mid lane inhibitor tower is the focus here from the side of the Trick2G army. Ethel getting shot down extremely low. A heal comes in from our IR map life here. But Sicko Scott taking a lot of damage at the same time. Red inhibitor goes down the bottom lane at the same exact time though. King Trick has been able to open up the gates on that one. Five dropping low. The shield goes down on himself. RF Legendary can't pick up a kill. Boy Boy Squad though is charging down onto a wild Nemo. He's going to wind it going down. Trick 2G walking in the backside though. Sicko Scott, RF Legendary, Matt Life, and Ethel chasing after him. He's going for the open inhibitor. He does have Zerbix and Bai still alive. Can he buy them enough time? He's throwing in, gets inhibitor to half HP. Now he's trying to juke and dive his way out of this one. One. We are going to see our flesh here getting the slow down on one. Boy Boy gets a chain. The distortion goes down. Boy Boy picks up a kill on Trick 2G. He opens up one inhibitor, only half HP on the next, and Trick's team loses a team fight. They have a minute long death timer on their captain. 40 seconds still on Maokai. Boy Boy's team, this is the time they need to shine. Yeah, exactly. That 60 second death timer on Udyr is going to be huge. This is their time to take objectives. That fourth dragon buff may not be huge for them given how few turrets they've been pushing, but if they can get to that fifth, if they can stall out and get there, this is going to be a huge advantage for them and will turn these fights in their favor and, you know, be able to actually kill their opponents quickly and probably give them the opportunity to shut down Trick 2G as well. This is key though, this is the fourth dragon buff that's going to be going on to Void Boy's team. The tower destruction now on their side. However, they haven't been able to really step off their side of the map for the past five or so minutes. They're too busy defending against these opened inhibitor and downed inhibitor lanes. Now that they have the tower destruction on their side though, are they going to have the confidence to try to push into the enemy base? You know, I'm, I'm really hoping for, uh, you know, a 4-1 split push coming out for them. I really want to see pressure in the mid lane and pressure in the top lane. If they can get both of those lanes pushing in at the same time, they'll probably be able to get Udyr to take a tower, or an inhibitor rather, or a tower, depending on how they want to split up their characters. And really at this point, I think they're playing a little too cautiously on the side of Trick 2G. They have the pressure on this side of the map, and they just need to go for it, I think. There's only nine seconds until Baron's back on the map, though. This could be a big deciding factor in this game. Strompus, once again, decides to face tank a Cullen, getting him down to only a, like an eighth of HP in that situation. That's extremely low. And with Baron now live on the map, that might be devastating for Team 2G. A wild Mimo does have to pop an elixir as Voiboy goes in. Two chains do go off. The stun goes off as well, or the root goes off from that one. One chain and another signal goes out. A stun winds up going down to Wild Mimo. I are Matt Life in the meantime, getting chunked down by Zed, but Zed just suicide in that circumstance he had no hp but that's buying time for the captain trick 2g he's trying to get that top lane inhibitor down arp legendary has recalled but the inhibitor is going to go down to trick 2g boy boy in the meantime in the middle of a fight a wild Mimo trying to nuke down boy boy but boy boy comes back in and ethel's the one who picks up the killing blow on that one trick 2g and zerbeck in the meantime trying to do as much as they can on boy boy's side of the map zerbeck though caught out by sicko scott and arp legendary arp legendary gets the kill looks like trick 2g might be the only one left alive that can deal some damage as bive is alive but 
he is the support Janna on this team. This Baron could be Void Boys, and that could be game with pushing power, tower destruction, and Baron buffed up minions. Yeah, one of the big things to keep in mind there was that Strompus probably would have gotten the kill oh. on Soraka and may have even gotten out, except Baron did instead. Matt okay, Life never got the mind. kill on Soraka right there. Looks like Trick GG, they're still trying to take this some Void Boy's extremely low, but oh, Ethel's able to take the Baron buff there. Trick GG didn't actually have Smite available, but it was a pretty good bluff by him to try to force him into the Baron pit, take as much damage as possible. Improve recalls on their side, though. These minions are going to be supercharged and large and in charge, and they have the Tower Destruction buff on them from that fourth dragon. Void Boy's team, 35 kills in to this 50-minute long game finally might have the advantage they need to leave their own side of the map. I mean, maybe. With two inhibitors down, it's going to be pretty tough. At this point, they have to be really patient, and they're going to use the majority of that Baron buff just waiting for inhibitors to respawn, which is unfortunate for them because if they were able to push, they have a much stronger team fight at this point in the game, and they may actually be able to push down it and get that inhibitor of their own. Looking at Trickside, it is looking a little bit grim. 4, 12, and 4 on Strompus Zed. This is a champion we're talking a lot about in uh, the pick and ban phase. Not exactly panning out the way that Team 2G wanted it to, unfortunately. 5, 11, and 6 on Maokai as well. He's got a lot of armor. He's going for the Alakid of the Iron Slayer to try to shield up the rest of the team and protect them in these fights that are going on that are normally a disadvantage for the side of the blue team. But... We see him getting blown up by every other person on the side of Void Boy's team. Ethel's starting to deal a lot of damage to him. He's acquired a Last Whisper, Zephyr, Mercurial Scimitar, every item that a DPS champion would love to have in this game. So that Maokai, that tankiness, not really a factor anymore that we hit the 50 minute mark. Yeah, it's just definitely not going to be as powerful as it was in the mid game. But one of the big things here is Mercurial Scimitar on both Aurelia and on Lucian, so not as scared of the Udyr stun, and definitely not scared of the Zed anymore, which is really rough for Zed. This patch especially has been rough for him because the cost of Quicksilver Sash has functionally gone down um, 1250 now, so just a super easy buy to pick up, and now obviously that we're in a late game, you turn that into the Scimitar, and just brutal for Zed. The only person he's really going to be able to kill is Soraka, but she can pretty much stop all of his damage by just dropping that silence on top of herself. Well, this is going to be very interesting. I have a visual bug right now where Maokai constantly has his Vengeful Maelstrom on. But that's a bigger circle. That's a Pantheon man drop coming in on him. Ooh, the Janna Tornado knocks him out of that targeted stun, however, though. They're buying time for Trick, who's pushing down in the mid uh, bottom lane. That inhibitor did respawn, and he's going to try to open the gates. The improved recall's going off, though. They're not going to be able to stop RF Legendary's port as he winds up going down to meet Trick into the bottom lane. Trick pushes up some minions, but they're not able to fight right here. Baron Buff is still ticking away on the side of Boy Boy's team for about a minute longer. The fight's going to start the void boy actually draws a wild Nemo all the way back into his enemy team underneath the tower ethel goes legendary as he picks up a kill trick is not in this fight he's gone for the bottom inhibitor he's trying to push in for the win he gets one inhibitor down the bottom lane so one for one inhibitor trade right here the life of the tank for the life of inhibitor trick 2g's team they're just trying to disengage right now Oh, and this is so hard for Void Boy's team because they're trying to be decisive. They're trying to pull off these excellent team fights, but no matter how they engage, if they don't wipe them, the enemy team super quickly, Udyr's going to get that inhibitor. He's never going to go for that team fight. They're never going to get the five on five that they really want. And Udyr's just going to keep split pushing, keep staying objective focused. And that, in the end, might be what wins Trick 2G's team this game. Well, Trick 2G's team right now has eight towers to the now six that have been taken down by Void Boy Squadron. They still had to go through that outer mid tower in the middle lane. So they were able to get that for themselves, but they aren't able to capitalize on anything else. There's no inhibitors. They could have gone for the bottom lane one, but now there's super minions from Team 2G down there. So they couldn't even really use that effective time while Maokai was dead to try to press that advantage because they had to keep Aurelia back in their base to defend against Udyr. This dragon buff coming up though will be the fifth one if Boy Boy's team could secure that. That's going to be 150 true damage burning down and amplification double time of all their other buffs. This right here is huge. This could be the turning point for Void Boy's team. Despite the fact that they are down two inhibitors, one of them will respawn soon, which means that they only will have to really watch out for that one lane of super minions, and now their damage is just so huge. That dragon buff, that fifth dragon buff, coming in huge here, or coming in strong here. Let's say huge a few more times, make it interesting. Um, and we really just, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, they, call me the, they call me the thesaurus. The thesaurus. Oh, my gosh. All right. 
<laughs> fast. Oh, wait a second. Trick 2G is going in. He takes the mid lane tower. He tries to flash out, finds an RF legendary who goes godlike. But that's another exposed inhibitor now that somebody on Trick's team could backdoor. Like maybe Strompist. He's in top lane all by himself. Nobody can see him. He will be spotted once those minions come out. But look at all the pings going down. Trick 2G's team, they're like, oh, the enemy team is running down mid lane. We're going to try to move towards the bottom. We're going to try to move towards the top. Look. And Void Boy's team is like, we don't see anybody. We need to recall. They're so indecisive at this point. Nobody knows where to go. It's like a staring match. Strompus, though, is going to be the first one to make a move. RF Legendary comes in. He winds up using the Death Mark. RF Legendary does cleanse it off of the Mercurial Scimitar and just evaporates Zed. Now the rest of Void Boy's team chunking out into the mid lane. They do take that inhibitor. The bottom inhibitor is going to fall as well. Now it's Void Boy's team with the inhibitor advantage. Void Boy's going to get one chain down onto a wild Mebo, taking him down to Vic. Very, very low amounts of HP. Trick is down for 24 seconds. Strump is down for 60. Void Boy's team is still five members strong, but not everybody is in the base here. Critical strikes from Ethel. The legendary Lucian takes down that craze. 4-4-4 four, four, four against 14-3-9. That could just be the game right there, Sifa. Yeah, and the big failure here was Trick 2G getting caught out. Despite the fact that he got that turret, the second he dies, all of that pressure is gone, and Boy Boy's lineup has no fear of leaving the base, no fear of pushing down the mid lane, because they know that RF Legendary will always be able to duel that Zed, and there's no more Udyr. GG coming out here, victory to Boy Boy's team, 3-0 for the week, and a pretty rough week for Trick 2G here, 0-3, despite the fact that they had Boy Boy's team on the ropes for most of the game. You gotta really give it to Trick 2G's team, though. They come off a loss in the first match of the day against Night Blue Squadron, who Night Blue Squadron looked a lot better on day two compared to day one. They were more coordinated, they were making better calls, and they really coveted that dragon control, something that Void Boy's team was able to kind of extend control of in the late game against Trick 2G's army. However, Trick's team had a gold lead for a very decent portion of this game, and it kept bouncing back and forth. Despite the fact that Void Boy's team ends the game with a 13,000 gold lead and 41 kills to 17, it took them 55 minutes to push out from the opposite side of the map and go into the enemy base and actually take the game. So it's a 0-3 for Trick 2G's team for this week, but still, the members of the team, they adapted to their captain's strategy, and they tried to do it the best way possible. Day number two, a lot better looking for every single team, except for maybe Cutie Pie and the boys, than day number one. Yeah, day number one was pretty solid for Cutie and the boys. Gotta love that team. But yeah, really impressive play from Void Boy's team here. Very patient, despite the fact that they consistently gave up objectives. They knew that in the long run it would work out for them.